Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I want to show you a way to crop photos when creating a menu display like this on the iPad. In my iPad Mac community, which is an online community that I run, one of my members knows how to design a menu display just by using an iPad. Isn't it really cool? All of these were created on the iPad. Her name is Okami-san. When Okami-san wanted to use this image of a crab miso dish, and she wanted to crop out the surrounding background, she asked me how that could be done. And for this image of a hot pot too, she wanted to know how to crop the oval shape of the pot so that she could paste it on her menu display. So today will be kind of a session to answer these questions asked by my member in my IPMA community. Alright, let's get started. The app we'll be using today is called Affinity Photo, which is often used by advanced designers, and it can be used to crop images really well. The app originally costs around $24, but you can get it cheaper when it's on sales. Let's begin! Once you open Affinity Photo, start by tapping the plus button that can be found at the top right corner. Then proceed by selecting Upload Images. I selected this image of a hapa which I showed you earlier. In Affinity Photo, we have a tool panel on the left side and the property panel on the right side of the screen. With this property panel, you can adjust the layer, color as well as the filter. In the tool panel on the left side, you can find trimming and movement tool functions. There is also a bar at the top of the screen where the mode can be changed. From left, we have Photo Mode, Selection Mode, Distortion Mode, and Development Mode. We'll be switching between these different modes to edit the photos. It might be difficult to remember all these tools, but let's try to master them one by one. Today we'll be working under the Photo Mode. Once the Photo Mode is selected, the tool panel on the left side will also change. Select the Smart Selection Brush tool, which is the third icon from top on the toolbar. We'll proceed by using this brush to select the specific area of the Hapa image we want to keep and removing the background later on. Try tracing over the Hapa with an Apple Pencil. As the dotted lines appear as you trace, the area of the photo you're trying to select is automatically selected. Just by tracing around the hopper roughly, the Smart Selection Brush tool will take care of everything for you to precisely outline the hopper image. An alternative way to do this is to use the Freehand tool, which can be found at the fourth icon from the top in the toolbar. Using this tool, you can select a specific area of the image by tracing with Apple Pencil. You could use either way, but I would suggest using the first Smart Selection tool. It's easier and it looks better too. At the bottom, you can also set the brush size, which enables you to select the image more precisely. In case there are parts that are protruding from the area you wanted to select, we'll be using a tool shown at the bottom. By tapping the icon located on the left side that says Add, it will change to Remove. By tracing the image under these settings, you can reduce the selection range. Switching between these Add and Remove functions while tracing will enable you to select the image precisely. If there are any unwanted areas that are selected, use the Reduce function to remove them. I'm finished with selecting the image area. To crop this, open the layer panel on the right side and click on the plus button. Then select Mask Layer, which will hide the background surroundings of the selected image area. This function is called Mask, 
and it can be used to crop out the specific area of the image. By tapping on the triangle icon on the layer, the mask layer will appear at the bottom. By checking the box on or off here, you can turn on or off the mask function. If you look at the bottom of this pod, you can see how the image selection turned out to be really rough. As a way to smooth this out, while the mask layer is turned on, make sure that the photo mode is turned on too, and select the brush tool from the toolbar. Please pay attention here, because it can be a little bit tricky. In the brush category located at the bottom of the screen, set the brush color as black. The area trace with this black brush will be hidden. In contrast, changing the brush color to white will make the trace area to be restored again. This is the basic of the mask function, control with two brush colors, black and white. The edges of the selected image can be adjusted by repeating the process of adding and removing selection area. This is something important, so I'll suggest practicing this part several times. Now that we're done with cropping, let's save the image. Click on the Save button located at the top left corner and click on Export. Since it gives you several options, select JPEG. From the Share button at the bottom, click on Save the image. Now the image should be saved in your camera roll. Since the background is transparent right now, you can upload and paste this image onto a different app. Let's repeat the same process again to crop this image of a crop mesa dish. Let's review. Switch to your selection mode and select a smart selection brush from the tool panel on the left side of the screen. Again, I'll roughly select the image area I want to crop. In order to adjust the rough edges, switch between the Add and Remove functions from the bottom. Setting the brush size smaller will enable you to select the image area more precisely. Once we're done with the image selection, we'll use the mask function to crop. From the pause button here, Select Mask Layer. As shown right now, the background is cropped out and the image I selected in the previous process remains. I'll now be using the brush again to make small adjustments around the edge of the scrap mesa dish. As we did earlier, select the Mask function and switch to the Photo mode. Select the brush from the toolbar on the left side. The color of this brush will be either black or white. Just remember that a black brush is to display, and a white brush is to hide. Trace the edges by switching between these two colors to adjust them. If you want to change the size of this crab dish, you can use the move in tool. It's the second icon from the top in the toolbar. It's the arrow icon. Using this tool, you can adjust the size as well as the position. Let's try adding background. From the plus button, select Color Fill Layer. Use the color palette located on the right side to pick a color. By dragging the previous layer of the crab miso dish image on top of this background layer, you have the image appear with the background in the color selected of your choice. I want to add drop shadow to this image. To do so, there is a category called FX in the property panel. Turn on the shadow on the peripheral option. This will make a setting bar appear at the bottom of the screen. 
And this is where you can adjust the size, density, and position of the shadow. By enlarging the radius, the drop shadow will appear like this. To make it seem like natural shadow, make sure not to make the color density too dark. Just like this, you can use filter editing or other image editing functions aside from cropping, so please check them out. At last, I want to add some text so that it looks like a menu before I finish. Okay, this is the final version. How does it look? I think it looks a lot like something that will appear on the restaurant menu. Affinity Photo has many functions and some of you may be overwhelmed in the beginning. But don't worry, you will eventually master the selection tool and the mask function and it will definitely be worth the purchase. So please give it a try. And thank you to Okami-san for sharing your images with us today. Okami-san is the owner of a Japanese hot pot restaurant called Motsunabe Yajirobe. I'll put the link down below. She uses Affinity Photo and Pages to design really high quality menu like this. I was so impressed by her works. I thought such design could only be created on Mac, but she really proved us how it could be done on iPad too. So please try it out everyone. And to Okami-san, keep up with designing great menu displays and please share more of them with me when you're done. In my iPadMe community, I often respond to questions from my members and sometimes I also do live seminars. The one I did most recently was about introducing some Photoshop techniques. I probably spent an hour doing demonstration, but it was really fun. So if you're willing to learn how to make use of this app, I'll be more than happy if you could join us or my iPadMe community. Alright, that's all for today. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video and thank you for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!